Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of GIS Answers. Today we'll be looking at part two of Ohio Bigfoot sightings using ArcGIS Pro. We left off looking at Salt Fork State Park. There was a cluster of uh, sightings in that area and we looked at some reports from the BFRO website and that was in Guernsey County. So what we're going to do is look to see if there's any other clusters of sightings. And here's some right around Can Canton, Ohio, Stark County. The If you didn't see the first episode, uh, the sightings are in, a, in yellow, yellow points, okay? The counties are the red boundaries and we have national parks state parks regional county and local parks and national and state forests in the green but this is just on the outside of Canton Ohio uh, a class A sighting would be a visual sighting of a Bigfoot Sasquatch Yeti or whatever you want to call him or her and a class B sighting would be evidence to support the fact that there is a Bigfoot, which could be uh, footprints, vocalizations, uh, nests, broken tree limbs, or any evidence to support that. So let's have a look. There's a, a class A here. In February 1995, two friends witnessed a tall, hairy creature drinking from a pond. So we're going to flip back to the BFRO website, the Bigfoot Research Organization website. And it was February 19, 1995 in the county of Stark. Stark. Now let's look for February 1995, see if there, it's actually here. Don't think I see that one. Oh, yep, there it is. Class A. The pond is clearly visible from the road, but on a private but on private property. One morning between six and seven AM, I was driving west on Baum Road in Stark County, Ohio. There's a small pond. At that time, there were large bushes growing on either side of the pond. I traveled that road a lot, and it became a habit to glance down at the pond to look for deer. On this particular morning, what I, I saw what, without a doubt, was a large fur-covered creature. He was squatting in front of the bushes at the edge of the pond and was using his right hand to drink, dipping into the water. A friend was in the car with me. We were going to breakfast. She saw the exact same thing. We didn't talk about it or even acknowledge that we'd seen anything. Frankly, I thought I couldn't possibly have seen what I saw. Finally, I asked her if she'd seen anything at the pond. She described the same scene. We were too stunned, awed, to go back to turn around for a second look. Wow, that's great. So two witnesses saw the same thing. It, uh, at this pond. So, a great example there. Class A sighting, visual sighting. And just on the edge of town here, let's have a look at another one. September 2011, Class A sighting, strange occurrences outside a home lead to a daylight sighting by a father and son near East Can Canton. September 2011, Class A sighting, East Canton. So 
So it, so it began by hearing a low guttural growl in the backyard. So it sounds like some kind of, uh, excuse my dog, she's having a drink. This is a very detailed uh, report. I can't read all of this, we'll be here all day. stood there in amazement because of the size of this human looking creature. I asked my son what it was doing and he replied it's moving its upper body back and forth. At this time I really don't think that it set into our minds what we were exactly looking at. But I can say that it seemed as though time stopped and I have no idea how long we actually viewed this thing. We both just stood there and watched this thing and we never moved an inch because I think we were in shock from the massive size. The unexplained creature appeared to be at least seven and a half feet tall and had to weigh a minimum of 600 pounds. The hair, the hair was dark reddish brown and it had matted and dirt and a dirty look to it. And most of the face was covered with hair. But from what you could see, it appeared to be that appeared to be of human trait. The ears were covered with hair and it was standing at an angle to us. But I could see the legs were extremely muscular and large and the arms length seemed to be seemed to go just past the knees. I just couldn't help but to stare at this creature because I couldn't believe the size and just how big it was. I believe I believe that as it was swaying its upper body back and forth because I knew I knew that it, it knew we were there. Wow. And it goes on to say it seems like some kind of hypnosis. We need to go, he said to his son. Wow, that's pretty good. So that's just on the edge of Canton. Here's a cluster in a park. Kayu Valley. Kayu Hoga. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Valley National Park. You can see there's a cluster right around this park. Some Class A sightings. One right in the middle. September 2005, man recalls early evening sighting near Brandywine Ski Resort. Let's have a look at that, see if we can find this one. Summit County, 2005, September 2005. Summit County, 2005. I was driving on Route 271 north over by Boston Mills Ski Resort when I spotted something walking into the woods in an upright position. I knew it wasn't a man or a bear. It was at the top of the hill on the south side of Route 271. I found a site that has sightings and shows the locations on the Ohio map and there was a sighting reported around the same place and time. 
So there is a cluster around here in this park, definitely. Let's have a look again. There's another Class A sighting. June 2011, daylight sighting behind a home in the National Park. Again, I don't know how to pronounce that. Cayuga Hoga, maybe. June 2011, Summit County. June 2011. I saw a Bigfoot from the chest up just below my house. It was in a wooded ravine below my house. This was on June 4, 2011. It arrived here with a great deal of crashing and breaking down of trees. I was looking to see what was coming when it stood up and looked at me. It had grayish brown long hair, particularly over the face, wide set of eyes, ears on the side of its head, and a huge chest and shoulders. It looked at me for maybe one minute, then went back down the ravine. Later that day, it was making lots of sounds like low grunts. My friend heard this as well. After staying in the Cayuga Valley area all summer, and I would often hear it calling, smashing rocks together, knocking on trees, and one day it sneezed a lot. Another day in September, my cousin was using a large tractor to mow under the trees behind my house, and, it, and as I walked to my car from behind the house, I heard a terrific crash to my right, and there it was again. It, it had knocked over a tree, and then I saw it run back into the ravine. I did not see any tracks because I knew it was down in the ravine most of the time. I left it alone. It only recently seems to have left the area. I heard something like, I heard something like it for about two years, but never saw it again. Never saw it in that time. So they heard it for about two two years, but never saw it again. Anyway, that's really great. Um, so that's part two of the Ohio um, investigation, uh, looking at uh, BFRO points in Ohio. Uh, we might finish up with the third part. Um, hopefully you find these uh, videos interesting, and a combination of GIS and Bigfoot. Uh, sightings and please subscribe to the channel and like the video and we'll see you again thanks bye